Hello there, this is Kush Sharma from Creative Pad Media. In this video, we will be seeing how we can use Generative Fill along with another AI tool, which is ChatGPT, to just take an ordinary image like this and use, let's say, this product to turn it into something more professional looking like its own product shot like this, okay? So it's very straightforward. Now, first of all, in order to use the tools that I'm going to be showing you, the AI tools in Photoshop, you need to be subscribed to Creative Cloud. That means have the real Photoshop. In case you don't have that, you can go for a free trial which they offer. The link will be given in the description so that you can work along with me. Also, this particular image has been given to you. You'll again find the link in the description. Now let's get started. So what we're going to do is, this is just like an ordinary image. We are going to select one of these products. So again, let's just go for this one. Okay, and we just need to isolate this. So what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to crop this so that this is there for us. Let's just zoom into it. And then we can take, let's say we can use select subject and that's going to just make a selection of the subject because ultimately what we need to do is we need to isolate it, have it on, on its own layer. So you can see we've got a nice selection here. And then let's open up a layer mask quickly so that everything else just goes away. At this point, there's a good chance because these edges were just selected by an automated tool. So there's a good chance they might be slightly jagged. So when we have our layer mask, we can go over to select and mask. And then just make sure if we put this, for example, on any of these overlays, we'll be able to see whether the edges are fine or not. So you can see, right? The edges look a bit jagged. That can sometimes happen even here. So we can just use, in this case, the smooth slider just to smoothen this out. So you can see that just makes it really smooth and nice. And that's all we need to do. So that has just improved our selection. This is kind of optional, but I always do it. The next part of this process is to choose the dimensions because we need to change the canvas size and this will be determined by what is your ultimate objective. So if you see, for example, in this case, the final image was this one and this is a square image. So let's say if you're using it for social media like Instagram, the usual dimensions or the aspect ratio is one is to one. So what we can do here is we can just crop this image. So use the crop tool and then here in the properties where it says ratio, just select one is to one, which is square and just make this big. That's all you need to do right now. Okay. And then just hit okay. Now we need to just scale this down. This will again depend on how big do you want this bottle or this product to be in the final shot. So in this case, I was going for something like this. So I think that should be fine. But this is too big right now. So we can hold down control command T. That's the shortcut to access the transform tool and just transform this to something like this. And again, where do you want to place it? Rule of thirds in the middle or somewhere else. So let's choose something like what I've done in the original image that I showed you. So I think this should be fine. And finally, it's time to use generative fill along with chat GPT. So what we're going to do is we need to access our selection because we need to access only the background. So I can hold down control command and click on this layer so that we get our selection back. Then go to select and inverse the selection so that we can work on the background. Now we need to access the contextual taskbar where generative fill is there. That can be accessed by going to window, and then go into contextual taskbar. And then we now hit generative fill and we can enter our prompt. This is the part where I like to use chat GPT to create this background for us so that we don't really have to imagine and then write that's too much effort. So if I go over here to chat GPT, ChatGPT, as you must be knowing, is a free AI tool. You can just create your account, just go to Google, type in OpenAI, which is the company that makes ChatGPT. Chat so you can type in OpenAI account creation or just write, create an account, ChatGPT, and it's completely free. Ultimately, when you have created your account, you will be able to see this part where you can write your prompts. And here, I've already written something. So what we're going to basically ask ChatGPT is that, you know, I have this PNG image. PNG just means like a transparent background kind of an image that we created of a hand lotion bottle. I want to generate, I want generate a fill prompt to create a nice product photography background for it. Clean, minimalist look, uh, but also a background that suggests it's a bathroom. So this is uh, completely subjective. What exactly do you want the prompt to do for you? You're just giving an idea to chat GPT here. So I'm just going to copy this 
paste it here and it's going to give us a nice prompt. You can see here, it's going to give us a very detailed prompt, create a minimalist bathroom background and it's tough to write this on your own. So we can just now copy this, go back to Photoshop and just paste it here in generate a fill prompt window and just hit generate. And now let's see the magic here. All right, let's wait for the results. And boom, so you can see, right, this looks really nice and professional. However, there is one fault which often happens in generative fill when you're using it, which is that it has distorted the product that we had selected also, because you can see here, our product wasn't that thick. It has added some things to it. So we're gonna take care of that. But first of all, let's at least go through the variations to see which one looks the best. So we've got three variations. This is the first one. Let's see the second one. I think this also looks really, really good. However, I won't be choosing this one and I'll tell you the reason for that, okay? I think this also looks really nice. But let's say that we kind of uh, stick with this, okay? Now, the reason I'm not sticking with this particular image, even though I actually felt this was the best, is because this has a shadow right on this part also, on the right, like it's kind of touching the towel and it has done a great job. But what we will have to do, because it has distorted the product, is that we will actually have to remove this bottle from this scene, okay? And we'll have to replace it by the original bottle so that we don't get this issue. Now, if I was to do it in this image, we'll again be using generative fill to do that. So I'll have to kind of make a rough selection around the bottle like this. And then it's gonna do some things to the towel also because it's gonna be a part of the selection. So I'm not gonna choose this image. You'll understand when I actually do it. So let's choose this image. By the way, if you weren't happy with any of these, you can hit generate again, you'll get three more. But right now, just for speed's sake, let's say we really like this particular uh, result. Now we need to get rid of this entire bottle because this is distorted. So what we can do here is we can use generative fill on this layer once more. So let's say if I just take something like a lasso tool and just draw a rough selection, something that just encompasses the distorted product that we have. Just like this, or rather draw this, and then when I, remember, whenever you have to remove something, you really don't have to enter anything. Just hit generate a fill and then hit generate and hopefully that should remove this entire bottle from this particular photo. So basically what we're going for here is that, yes, now where we know that according to the size of the product, the original product that we had chosen, we at least have something that we can hope to match with, right? So you can see, right, sometimes this is gonna do it, uh, it's gonna do things like this. That means it's not going to fully remove it and you might need to just do it again. But our idea is that we will be using that original again right here and then just creating a shadow underneath it. Because right now there's no other way of handling this problem that generative fill has, okay? So you can see, right, it's again and again not removing it completely. I'm just going to try one more time. Sometimes when this is happening, then you can just type remove bottle. Okay, because right now this all is new. Nobody exactly knows what works. You can see, right? Sometimes it would have just in the first go, it would have just given us the result and completely removed everything. Sometimes you need to type. It's just a hit and miss. Uh, you know, you just have to go with things. So yeah, it's kind of getting there. Let's just, I'm, I don't want to waste your time. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do it a couple of times till this uh, just removes this. Otherwise, you can also use the remove tool here. Okay, so we get this remove tool, which we can also use that we can use the spot healing brush tool probably also. But I just want to use generative fill since this whole video is about that. So I'll just use it once more. And let me see if this works. All right, so this time, it finally did the job and I actually just typed remove. Okay, so like I said, it's going to be a hit and miss. But you can see this is a pretty clean job. Now all we have to do is bring back our initial bottle which was not distorted in, in any way so what we, we can do is let's say just create a duplicate layer and let's just bring this right on top so right here so you can see right now we're getting the best of both the worlds we're getting our original bottle back and also we have this nice ai generated background we don't have any issues with those distortion the only thing is we will just might have to move this around a bit so if we uh probably you know if you remember from the original, it was slightly close to this part. It's gonna look like right now that it is floating in the air, but at least everything else from a 
proportion point of view, from a perspective point of view is correct because this was the original product that we used, right? This was the original image that we used to generate this background. So at least we have that consolation with us. Just a bit of work. Now you can actually see this itself doesn't look too bad, right? It does, it's not looking like it's floating, it's not looking like it's 2D. And if someone was to see this for the first time, they probably wouldn't notice the lack of a shadow here. But what we are gonna do is, since we know about it and we can just give it a slightly more realistic touch, what we can do is just add a shadow underneath. Now, the good part is sometimes you can actually use generative fill for this. So let's just try that. Since we have been using generative fill, let's just quickly try that and see if that works. So we're just gonna select this area and just say add shadow, okay? Like I said, might work, might not work. Let's see the result. All right, so you can see, right, that doesn't look good at all. Let's just see the variations here. This one, probably not that bad. If you see the before and after, yeah. It's kind of adds that 3D feel to it, but still, I just feel it's not too good. Let's just see the third variation. This probably is okay. Like, for example, if I was to probably decrease the opacity here, won't look too bad. So you can see sometimes it actually produces very good shadows, right? Uh, in this case, probably it did not do a very good job. So I'm just going to delete this. Adding a shadow is pretty easy. We really don't have to work uh, too much on it. So what we can do is just create a new layer. Okay. Uh, the reason I was trying that was I wanted to keep this video completely AI, but this proves that sometimes you just need to do human work also. So what we can do is just make sure you take your normal paint brush. This feels ancient now, but just do it. Just select black, okay, here from the palette. And then just, I probably click a few times. I mean, this should be fine. Then hit Control Command T to access the transform tool. And we just need to squeeze this, okay, to make a shadow like really flat. So you can hold down Shift and then just push this. Okay, like this till it becomes really flat and then just hit enter and then now we can just, you know, kind of move this right underneath the bottle. Maybe just using my arrow keys to probably do it here. Now it's coming on top of the bottle. It's not really noticeable, but I'm anyway going to turn down the opacity here. And you can see like that looks really nice. Yeah, a bit of shadow is coming on the bottle. This is not noticeable. Otherwise, you can always create a layer mask and just run white over it. If this, uh, and it doesn't matter on this bottle because it was dark anyway, but yeah, you can do that. But I don't think it's needed before, after, but ultimately you can see that we were able to mainly use AI here to get this shot in just a matter of seconds. Just imagine doing this manually it would take hours and hours of work to create a composite like this. Now, before I end this video, I've got two resources for you. All these things do require you to understand the basics of Photoshop, like layer masking, selections, and all these things. So if you are someone, you want to learn that so that you can easily follow advanced tutorials like this, then do check out my free Photoshop course. It has 20 videos. It's completely free. And the, these videos just teach you all the basics you need to know about Photoshop. Secondly, if you're already at that level and you really want to dive deep into the AI stuff related to Photoshop, then I've got a detailed course called Photoshop Generative AI Editing Masterclass, which is all about generative fill and all the other AI features to inside Photoshop. It's a very long course, it's accessible via Udemy. So do check it out. The links to both these courses will be given in the description. I hope that you liked this video. In case you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.